The sieges are going well. So we'll have in no time retaken the area that this war is about. Which gives us a huge war score. And for some reason we're no longer attached to our ally. Which we would like to be. Doesn't look like I can attach, I don't know why. It's just not happening. So we'll have to follow him around manually like a puppy. Oh, fine. Let's see if there's something we can actually siege or... or we can. So let's do that. So we get a little bit of gold out of this. By sieging ourselves. And we can still join him later. We'll just have to run if he comes our way. <laughs> This is why, especially in war, you play on a low speed to react quickly to what's happening. Okay, he's sieging. He's not going to stop sieging. I woke up this morning, my hands and feet were bleeding and there sharp and pain in my side. What is happening to me? It's Tikmata, I am blessed by God, truly. As any good Catholic would do. Assume. So maybe we can bait him into attacking. Oh, cool. Okay, finally, our diplomat, he has fabricated a claim, which we can now use. It costs us some gold to take it and some prestige to take it. And he's going to be furious. But we're going to take it. That way we can declare war against him at some point. All right, okay. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Game just started. Okay, someone is intriguing. Known plots, okay. She wants to kill me. And we can tell her to stop it. We can stop it. Okay, we are hard pressed to find a way to endear him to us, so... We will... Um, tell him how cool we are. All right, let's pause this real quick and check our claim. So we have a strong claim, but it's not going to be inherited unless we press it in war. So we have a certain amount of time to do this. We have 42. And business hasn't done us anything good so far, really. So we might as well switch to war for the remainder of our time until we reach the age of 50, especially since we're constantly in war anyway. So now that we have the claim... Oh yes, he enjoyed our self-flattery. And she stops trying to kill us. It's all nice. So we take this, get the gold and then we go home. Wow, two gold? Come on, really? So we send our troops back home. Because now we have our own war to prepare for. <sighs> Let's try one more time to attach to him. If we can, we do. If we can't, we don't. Ooh, another son for us. Oh no, a grandson. Goody. So he's someone in the line. Let's teach him in duty and see if we can't get something cool. Frankish, Basque, Anglo-Saxon is probably the best here. Ooh, Irish. Who are you? How are you Irish? 
Oh, but that's fine. Um, let's arrange this patrol down here. Let's get this alliance going. Okay, we can't... Still not attached, so we're just going to stick here. And follow his movements around. Let's have another alliance. We're doing really well on that. So once we start our own war, we're going to be backed by a ton of people. Not all of them might join us, but most of them will. I wonder if he's going to fight. No. He's going to North Umbria, and so shall we. And he's definitely going back up to here. So are we. Oh, he finally died. Oh well. Okay, so since we picked war, we get another chance to pick another trait for us. Offense or defense, that's the question. So we can get uh, a defender or unyielding. Unyielding gives us moral defense and defense, and defender gives us less damage but more defense. Now, we have aggressive leader, which gives us minus 10% in defense. So we could get the moral defense and offset the defense. So this way, unyielding, we get a pretty decent combination for war. Wait, where are you going? Dunbar. Right, fine. And he keeps going south. Probably down here. And he goes north again, and I... now he goes here. See, this would have been a good moment to jump him. Even now it would be a good moment to jump him. So, what determines who leads in a war? Oh, he's attacking us. Grand. Okay, we have another chance of redemption here. So, let's check this. This time, since we... It's all Irish leaders. Like, we're winning this war. It's all commanders from Ireland. Now, we have just gotten a new trait. So, we have defense zero. But we have moral defense, 38%. So our center is going to never break. Our son, he's okay-ish. He's brave. But their flank has no leader, so it's going to crumple. Just look at this. Our son has very few troops, so it's understandable how they are failing against the much larger army here. And as you can see, we have now completely defeated the enemy. So the siege is done and the battle is done. The change in war score was pretty large. And we have gotten some prestige out of it. The game has a tooltip which uh, tells you that... Participating in battles gives a lot of prestige if you're an ally of someone. It's true, but it's not nearly as much as the game would like you to believe. So let's siege this down with those guys here. Maybe we actually get the siege done. But I don't think so. Nope. It wasn't our siege. Alright, okay, so our steward has improved the economy and he likes us to adopt our ideas. Which increases prosperity slightly, which is a good thing. And costs not a lot. Alright, so he has the absolute superiority. Now, it's time to take our troops home. Because we need to replenish and prepare for our own war. 
He should win this now. There's no reason why he should lose. It was a hard war. A very long war. But he should win it now. Oh, no. No, 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 no. We're not going to spend prestige this way, some kinsman, to us. Now, we can't stand down troops outside of our territory unless we want to lose a bunch. Um, if you stand down your troops in enemy territory or not your territory, you're going to lose some because they're not going to return to their uh, country. I will show you here. So if we stand them down now, only 96 of our troops will return to be raised again. So don't stand them down outside your country. Alright. There's still... The warriors that didn't stand down are the event spawn troops. Um, these 77 warriors that were raised to my cause. Now let's check him. He has only one aggression pact, non-aggression pact, and 628 un units to his name. I have 779 already, and there's going to be more once I leave my troops a little bit time to replenish, which we're actually going to increase the speed of by switching our marshal to train our troops. So both the amount of troops I can have and the speed of which they are going to replenish is going to increase. So we can easily attack him and take his land. As you can see, opposed to the early, the early episodes here, a lot of things are starting to happen and coming together. We would ideally like to use those 77 warriors. It's granted not all that many, but it is enough to make a difference. Now he doesn't have a lot of prestige or piety, so he will not be able to raise some troops out of thin air against us, which is good. All right, let's give him a focus. He shouldn't be, yeah, I don't care. Don't care about the kid. We're just waiting for our troops to replenish a little bit. So once we're around 900 or something, we're going to declare war. Then we can call in an ally or two. And crush this. We, we already have much better... Much better commanders than he has. Let's see, maybe we can find an even better commander still. Before we go to war. So we reset. We load the filter we created earlier. Oh yeah, look at this. A holy warrior. That's a cool trait. Doesn't really help us here. But he's decent. Still. So let's have him. So let's merge this army. And put this guy in charge of this flank. Now we want our aggressive leader in the center. And everyone else somewhere else. <laughs> Good, we're almost at a 900 warrior amount, which will be enough for us to fight. I should unpause. That helps with increasing troops. So one issue with my plan here is that we actually are going to shatter our realm once we take it. Because we have the gavel kind of inheritance. So all of these have some claim to titles within the realm. But we're still going to do it. 
Because it's better in our hands, in our family, than in someone else's. So let's do this. See? All these are willing to join us and he has no one helping. So we declare war and we'll call in one or two allies. Just to make sure. And we've raised all our troops and we're immediately going to attack. Not even going to wait. And our allies are coming as well. Now, when fighting with allies, first let's watch this. How they get slaughtered. This flank's already done. Our center is kind of breaking. King didn't did too well there. But already we won this. Now, allies you can indirectly control. Either you go to your army and tell them, hey, you guys come here and help out. So we're going to tell this army to help with the siege. And the other army, we're going to go to the military and check our allies in war thing. And we're going to tell him, go and hunt the enemy. Because once these are no longer shattered in retreat, he's going to go after them. And he has more troops than he does. So this is how, hopefully, we can control this war and keep him from besieging our stuff. Oh, what? I think I sent the wrong person to do the wrong thing. Oops. Uh, right, right, right. You guys attach. And... Sorry, my fault, my fault. And you guys hunt. So they're going to wait out the siege with me and there you see. They're going to attack them. And since we won the siege, now we're going to attack as well. Just to make sure no accidents happen and our ally loses on accident. And now we go back to siege and... Oh no, my lover has died at 26, that's early. Okay, there's one more mechanic in the siege that I didn't show you, which is the assault. It's up here, and we can't do it since we're not the leader of the siege, and who is the leader of the siege? Highest ranking in the army. Not highest skilled, but highest ranking. So this duke, he outranks any one of us, so he's leading the siege, so we can't order it. Ordering an assault takes a lot of men out of us. This causes a lot of damage. So it's not super advisable. Unless you have a clear, clear, clear superiority. Now. Good. We have one. And a new... My daughter-in-law. No, 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 no. That's inappropriate. We're not doing that. And we have one, and we're going to force our demands. Giving us this new land. Now, as I said, we will lose a title on succession. This one. It's going to this son of ours. There are some ways we can try to, let's say, decimate the amount of heirs we have. But realistically, we're a little bit in too deep. There's too many heirs eligible. Well, actually, only this guy. We can't directly attempt to kill our son. That's not possible, but there are some ways of dealing with it. So, that's not too bad. Now you have produced a claim. Let us go and produce another claim. In the north this time. We will be able... to build titles eventually, but not just yet. This is a mechanic we'll, we'll get to later and that helps us prevent a realm from shattering. Lots of things happening, lots of interesting stuff.